what's going on, buddy? My name is Zella Printon. Welcome back to a new video that I haven't recorded in so long. Now, to give a quick update to anyone who did not read my recent post in the community tab, um, I have not been making videos for the last two weeks due to pains I've been having in my, in my leg. And <laughs> it's been really bad to the point where I was like, I couldn't even get to the computer and sit down long enough to edit the videos I had already recorded the day before it all started hurting. But the pain has been much more tamed and under control lately, so I have been able to record at least a couple more videos, like the one you guys are watching right now, for next for the week this has come on out. And just so you guys also know, by the time this video comes out, I would have already had leg surgery again. I hear Luna behind me. She is not subtle when she comes into this room. All right, I guess I guess she'll hang out with me. <laughs> um yeah. If you did if you didn't read that that post, I also had mentioned that I was going to be having leg surgery again just to have my fixator removed. And by the time this video comes out, I would have already had surgery because I had not said that when surgery was going to be yet because I had not gotten confirmation. And then a few days later, I got the confirmation. I just didn't put it in the community post yet, which I don't think I'm going to because this video will already set it. So I will be having the sur would have had the surgery by now and I'll be resting for a while, but I'm going to get a couple videos ready just to finish up January and then back in I'll be back in February. And when I feel well rested enough and good enough to record longer, much longer videos. I will be recording more gameplay videos, which is something I have not done in quite a while since the last surgery I had back in uh, October. So with that truly being said, guys, we I'm not going to really delay any further. I wanted to just get, give you guys that quick update because I know some of you don't read my community posts, which you should if I don't post anything. It's always good to look there because I will have posted something in there beforehand or something after if something had come up. So that being said, this video was actually told to me by someone in the comment section named Boopy X. And I wanted to check it out because I have not reacted to any of uh, Film Theory's uh, backroom videos, which I'm shocked I never did. <laughs> I watched them, but I never decided to react to them. I don't know why I did, didn't do that. Because, if you know me, I love the Backroom series, but it scares the hell out of me. <laughs> so, I'm not really going to delay any further, guys. We're going to get right into the video and actually got to turn it down a little bit. There we go. And so, we're just going to get right into this. This is Film Theory, The Complete Lore of the Backroom Solved. What's Next? By the film theorist himself, Matt Pat. So we're going to go ahead and get right into today's video in three, two, one, go. Oh, wait, there was something else I wanted to mention. Uh, if you guys don't know the shirt I'm actually wearing, it's a little hard to see because it's a little faded. I'm actually wearing my golden Vanall shirt that came with this hat so long ago. I found it a couple weeks ago and I washed it. It was in the back of my closet somewhere. <laughs> so it's all good. It's all cleaned and whatnot. I'll take a picture of my back. My backside, and I'll probably throw it in this video, or if not, I'll put it in my community tab or something. So, anyway, going back to this, and I've got my trusted water with me, and the ice melted while I was doing that intro. Nice. The lore! I have to show you the Yes? Sorry, I need you to get off my table. I'll play with you later. I'm back up a couple seconds because Luna distracted me. The lore! I have to show you the lore! Hi, Matt. Hello, in 
internet, welcome to Film Theory, the show that knows that going onto YouTube can be like no clipping into the back rooms. You're minding your own business when suddenly it's days later and you have no idea how you've watched so many padlock reviews. A very, very beefy and very padlock robust reviews. block. Oh, would you look at the shackle on that baby. Shout out to Lock Picking Lawyer, by the way, for teaching me way more about locks than I thought a human brain could consume. Anyway, today <laughs> we're returning to the okay. mono yellow walls and ceaseless hum buzzing fluorescence of the back rooms. In case you need to catch up, The Back Rooms is an analog horror series here on YouTube.com created by indie filmmaker Kane Pixels. The initial video Kane uploaded in January of 2022 absolutely Jesus Christ. I can't believe it's already been a year since this video. It's almost, actually, yeah, it's been almost over a year now since this came out. Oh my god. It loaded in popularity, gaining over 43 million views and becoming the seventh most watched video on YouTube of the entire year. All thanks to its unique atmosphere, clever scares, and fantastic production quality. It was also Very. built for theorists like us, filled to the brim with awesome ideas and hidden lore for us to decode. In fact, towards the end of the year, Steph and I even gave Kane Pixels a Streamy Award to honor him for all his incredible work. This is a box that was uh, delivered to my house. So. Kane Pixels, here. Did I just no clip into the back rooms? <laughs> Kane, uh, I went to the back rooms and I got you this. I'm just so honored <laughs> to be accepted. I didn't this. see that so video, really, actually. The only thing I can say right now is thank you. But now, here we are, one year later from that initial upload, now with a story that spans four decades of time and 15 videos, plus a few secret videos mixed in. The community has come <laughs> up with a ton of ideas to explain this thing. Everything from alternative realities colliding to the back rooms being an incarnation of the ancient Egyptian afterlife. Our running theory here <laughs> is that the world that we right. see in the back rooms is some sort of simulation, like a giant video game or the Matrix. What we know of as the real world is the topmost layer of that simulation. But below the surface, there's an infinite procedurally generated world of unused and cut content. Stuff that either didn't fit or- I forgot he was talking about this last time I watched one of his videos. How the back rooms are seemingly like a game and such. I still don't believe it and such. I don't because it doesn't seem right with me, but I'm just saying just wasn't good I enough to make the, the cut for the real keyboard. world. And while I still believe that to be the case, today I wanted to take a step back and reset. The back rooms is a tricky hey, Look at that video I just posted the other day. <laughs> Talk about <laughs> nothing is presented in chronological order. No. Things tend to jump back and forth in time, with some earlier videos referencing events from later videos that haven't technically happened yet. Heck, the very first video that Kane ever uploaded is currently one of the last ones in the timeline. So today, I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to sit down and make a definitive timeline of exactly what's happened and when, so we can get ourselves a clear overview of everything that's going on in this. I also want to point out, uh. By rewatching Matt Pet's videos, is how I became aware that there were th that there were hidden videos in Kane's videos. <laughs> like when when I reacted to Backrooms episode two, found footage number two, I was like, "Why is there a car here?" And then I watched um, Matt's uh, last Backrooms videos that he last Backroom video that he made, and it explained the the car video. I was like, "Am I missing things?" I've been watching this series for so long and I'm missing stuff. <laughs> Just wanted to, wanted to say that. Because I think I, I think I said it in, in a previous backroom videos, but I wanted to mention it again. Giant mystery that Kane's crafting. And in doing this, in seeing what fits where, and more importantly, what doesn't fit where, we'll be able to learn a lot more about this story. Spoiler alert, friends, there appears to be a massive time loop we're dealing with, and we might just be time witnessing loop. the collapse of an entire universe. Jump into those hazmat suits and hold on to the red guideline, friends. We're <laughs> going in. The very first event that we see in the series actually comes from the most recent upload as I'm writing this script, really? Overflow. This video takes place on August 7th, 1972. As we can see, thanks to the Wait. signature of a man named Ivan Beck. Over the oh, I didn't even debate, notice that when I reacted to it. In video, we also hear a radio broadcast about the Lend-Lease Agreement, which happened between the United States and USSR in, you guessed it, 1972. Yeah, I was say, that we was familiar to me. I couldn't remember what it was, though. radio station is overtaken by a green glow that shakes everything violently before suddenly cutting to black. Remember that green light? It's going to be important for us later. The video yeah, that was one of my biggest questions and what I always wanted to ask about the green light. And I think I was actually going to make a video on it but if Matt Pat's gonna answer it now I don't think there's any point of me making that video 
video ends with the night sky now mirror reflected. Something in this universe has fundamentally changed. From there, we fast forward by about a decade to the early 1980s, when a central California-based company called Async begins researching electromagnetism. On May 10th, 1982, we see one such test of a strange electromagnetic device in the video prototype. By the way, if anybody wants to go see to any of my reaction videos from Keen Pixel's Backroom series, please go to the reaction uh, playlist and you'll find all of them there. Or by the time this video comes out, there should already be a separate playlist of every single one of my reactions to Keen Pixel's videos. That should already be out by now. Over the next several years, Async would refine this prototype into Project KV-31, otherwise known as the Low Proximity Magnetic Distortion, Distortion system. system. On July 2nd, 1988, Async performs a failed third test of the system, but it's their sixth test that really matters. On October 17th, 1989, at 5.04 p.m. Pacific, they power up the system one more time and successfully open a portal to the back rooms. They have made first contact. However, this move has dire consequences. 5.04 yeah, p.m. was the exact time of a real world magnitude 6.9 earthquake that hit California, killing 63 and injuring thousands more. All of this is confirmed in archival footage found in the secret video collateral.mov, and that's not the worst of it. From that point forward, the world is just glitched. Small, unseen portals into and out of the back room start popping up everywhere. People begin no-clipping through reality, never to be seen again. Starting yes. in October of 1989, the number of missing persons reports skyrockets. This is confirmed in the video titled Missing Persons. Obviously this video title is obvious. We soon learned that some of these portals yes, this are even was big also... enough for entire cars to slip through. Like... Yeah, that was the video I was talking about with the cars. That's the one I completely missed. Like we see in a secret, undated video that must come from around the same period. Meanwhile, back in the lab, Async begins to send in research teams. On February 3rd of 1990, they begin their first mission. Inside the back rooms, this team of scientists discover the body of Nicholas Bolton, one of the people called out as having gone missing. Fun fact, the picture used for Bolton here is actually the senior photograph of Nathan Barnett whom you might Ooh. recognize as dad from one of my other favorite creepy YouTube series that we've covered here on the channel several times. Go figure. It's almost like huh. subscribing to this channel is a great way to learn about all the coolest series that you should be watching right now. Just a random thought that popped into my head, but you know, the subscribe button is down below this video in case you want to use it. Interestingly, game, Nicholas's so. body is covered in what right. appears to be some sort of black moldy growth. Two days later on February 5th, in the video autopsy report, the medical report on Bolton's body shows that it contains a mutant strain of hay bacillus bacteria, which is slowing decay of some parts of the body while completely overtaking others. The coroner questions Async about where they found this thing. Mr. Beck, may I ask uh, where this subject came from? Which Async must not have liked. During this video, a bunch of images flash across a CRT television, including one that states contract termination. Originally, I thought that this was a contract termination between Async and the US government, but I actually found a wider, clearer version of this exact image in a trailer that Kane uploaded back when the Backrooms was just a school project. And the version of that document huh. reads- Wait, so he started this as a school project and he didn't expect it to explode the way it did? <laughs> I mean, you may, if you make a creepy video like that, how do you not expect it to explode in such a manner? employment contract termination. So I'm guessing that the doctor started asking too many questions and was let go as a result. Next oh. up on our timeline is February 29th, 1990 and the upload informational video. Here we see Async send in another group of scientists. This is also the first appearance of actual named living characters. In the group, we have Marvin Lee and the camera operator, Peter Tench. During their mission, Tench gets distracted by voices coming from an unseen party in a nearby hallway. He separates from the group briefly to investigate, but almost Almost immediately, he's met with a glitch that makes the rest of the team disappear. Hey guys, can you hear this? I remember this. Hey! Without knowing it, Peter has jumped forward in time. We're gonna rejoin him in a minute, but back to yeah. the rest of the team. From Async's perspective, Peter's team didn't disappear, Peter did. He just vanished into thin air, and so the rest presumably returned to headquarters to report his disappearance. We see the fallout of Peter going missing less than a week later, March 5th, 1990, in the video Motion Detected. Freaked out by an employee disappearing with no explanation, Async creates a new enclosed control room just on the other side of the backrooms portal. They also rig up motion sensing cameras near the 
entrance to track everything that's coming and going throughout the space. And it's a good thing they did too, because that night at 3 Yeah, because we got a bacterial creature coming through over there. Body shape moving across the ceiling. We don't know it yet at this point in the timeline, but later we're gonna learn that this is likely a black gooey monster made of a mutant strain of bacteria. The very same bacteria that infected Nicholas Bolton. We know this because Kane has posted a picture of the creature on his Ko-Fi account labeled Bacteria. We are definitely gonna see more from that guy later in the timeline. Oh, yeah. A little over two months later, on May 6th, 1990, another group of explorers are sent into the back rooms in the video Pitfalls. This team consists of- I think Pitfalls was my favorite video out of the entire series that Kane has made so far. That one was the most intriguing because it raised so many questions and kept you suspensed until the end. An unnamed woman, two men named Mark and George, and Marvin Lee now manning the camera. The party comes across a strange room with several holes in the floor and a door across the gap. One of the men carefully crosses the expanse, opens the door, and discovers a greenish glow. Instead of just saying what he sees, he calls over oh, to Marvin to- I didn't realize that the green glow was shown way before um, found footage too. I had not, I, you know what? It, it wasn't, the green grow wasn't really shown as something big until that video came out. So that wouldn't make sense why I never raised any questions about it beforehand. Then again, I never saw the green glow in the background of the door. To record it. Sorry, I'm pausing a lot. I'm just. Across? But as Marvin tries to cross the room, he falls into one of the holes and to a lower level of the back rooms. There, he discovers an underground neighborhood complete with trees and houses and streetlights. But things are just a little bit off here. Houses are built strangely. Signs are mirror reversed. Deep inside one of the houses, Marvin finds a room where someone's clearly been living, but whoever was there, they're gone now. When he hears a voice that's crying out, he goes to investigate, only to be met with another bacteria monster. This one chasing Marvin back to the hole that he fell into. That is not a person! Thank Thankfully, Marvin's team's able to pull him back to safety, and he escapes. The next video, Report, takes place immediately afterwards, with the team returning to Async's headquarters and sharing what Marvin found. This clearly concerns the Async staff, but because of the important upcoming presentation with the US government, they decide to just paper over the issue for the short term. A makeshift wall is constructed, oh sealing off the pitfalls area for the time being as they further fortify their control room. Two days later, on May 8th, 1990, we get the upload presentation, where Async hosts several government officials to pitch them a space their vision for the back rooms, an infinite storage and living solution. And they're just pitching to any old U.S. government officials. Notice the DOE watermark. These DOE. are representatives from the Department of Energy, including this guy right here who looks a lot like James Watkins, the real-world Secretary of Energy from this time period. Huh. During a video glitch back in Pitfalls, we see reversed text that reads to deceive the FEDE, which likely extrapolates out to deceive the federal government. I'm betting that this is text of some sort of internal memo at I did not notice that. Async, worrying about deceiving the DOE during these negotiations. Regardless of any concern, though, the presentation goes well. We see Async talking to the DOE about contracts afterwards, and one scientist confirms in a secret video that everything went according to plan. Actually, that went perfectly. We've got all the initial signatures, and the contract should be executed by next week. Except, there was something that didn't go quite according to plan that day. Remember Peter Tench, the Async researcher who glitched out and disappeared? Well, yes, he reappeared. After his squad disappearing into thin air, Peter tried his best to get back to Async's headquarters without any sort of guideline. And he finally finds all sorts of weird stuff on his little adventure, including a section of wall removed to reveal a secret area with forest print wallpaper, farm equipment, and the facade of a house. Eventually, Peter's able to make his way back to the back room's exit, discovering the new control room that Async built after his disappearance. He's able to open it with his keycard, but it sets off a motion sensing alarm inside, at the exact same time that Async is in contract negotiations with the DOE. We straight up see Peter in the Async control room from a security camera's perspective in the background. Just so we're all clear about what What's exactly happening here? This is over two months after Peter disappeared. When he glitched, yeah. he actually traveled forward in time. This really throws Async's leadership for a loop. In the hidden <laughs> video recording 014, we hear a phone call between an Async researcher and his supervisor, Ivan Beck. Still on the same day, May 8th, 1990. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. This isn't him, is it? As this conversation continues, the image of a newspaper fades onto screen. When reversed, this headline clearly reads, Fiery wreck beside Viney leaves one dead. Now, leaves Viney is cut off Viney. and could refer to either a vineyard where they make wine or the town of Vineyard near Sacramento in Central California. Either way, we can gather from huh. this headline and the tone of the conversation that Async believed Peter was dead and that after he disappeared, they covered it up by staging a car accident so Peter's family wouldn't ask any questions. And when Peter realizes what's happened, that he's traveled 
traveled into the future and that his family thinks that he's dead probably doesn't react all that well to it. There was likely no. some conflict with Async's higher ups, which resulted in Peter either escaping the facility back into the back rooms or Async just launched him back into the back rooms because he was a security risk. One way or another, Peter winds up trapped back in the back rooms, which leads us to the next video, Reunion. It's oh, a few boy. weeks later, May 25th, 1990. <laughs> that video had me on the edge of my chair the whole time because I was waiting for a jump scare that entire video. After Marvin's encounter with the bacteria monster, Async uses a remote control rover to return to the Pitfalls room and confirm that it's safe. They send more explorers and scientists in, creating a safe walkway to the door on the other side. Of course, we still don't get to see what's behind that door. Async Not instead yet. decides to send the cameraman Marvin along with Mark and another researcher to explore the area around the Pitfalls room. Now knowing that there's a dangerous creature that roams through these halls, Mark is armed with a shotgun to protect the group. Wouldn't want to be on the other end of that. You wouldn't want to be on the other end of that. Yeah, that's probably true. The trio head into a new area with no ceiling lights and floors made from white concrete epoxy instead of carpets. It's here that they discover evidence that someone's been living in this area. Tiles have been knocked off of the ceiling, seemingly as a trail to follow, and a map has been etched into one of the walls. However, before the group can really speculate about what's going on, they're ambushed by someone who grabs Mark's shotgun. Peter? Oh, shit. Mark? Barbara? It's our old friend Peter Tench once again. He's been yep. living back here since his escape or banishment from Async. Peter laments that Async basically took his life from him, asking if they held a funeral for him, if his family thinks that he's dead. The group confirms that yes, they did hold a funeral. Everyone thinks he's dead. Async is clearly keeping the fact that Peter Tench is alive secret from basically everyone. Despite being held at gunpoint, Mark calls for backup, only for Peter to shoot him and kill him yeah. as the video ends. At this point, we hit a pretty significant time jump with the next video being a secret archive video compiled over a year later March in June archive. of 1991. Nothing really noteworthy happens in it, I'm just including it for completionist's sake. If we want something really interesting though, we jump forward again to found footage number two, taking place on yes. August 19th, 1995. That is over four One that years after more the questions. archive video and over five since the events of Reunion. In found footage number two, a girl in a suburban home discovers a small portal into the back rooms hidden in her garage. God. God, it just, it, it went into the- After experimenting with it for a bit, she's pulled in. Inside the back rooms, she finds strange giant furniture, a locked door that she can't open, and perhaps most strangely, a car crashed into a wall. This is clearly a car that No clipped in from the real world. Now, I originally thought that this was the car that No clipped off the freeway that we saw in a secret numbers video, but Kane confirms that it's actually a different vehicle. Given that Kane also confirmed that the numbers car wasn't Margaret Watson's car like I previously thought, that means that at least three cars have No clipped into the back rooms. Oh, if so I had it was a completely different car then. Nickel for every time that happened. I mean, I have three nickels. It's not a lot, but it is weird that it's happened at least three times. Anyway, the girl- I remember that joke from his Finances Friday series. Uh, theories. The girl follows a trail of blood from the driver of the car into an area of the back rooms that looks more residential, but she doesn't find a body. Instead, she finds a room overtaken by black vines. These aren't just any old creepy plants. It's the bacteria monster who comes to life and starts chasing the girl. She runs back through everything that she's explored thus far, jumping down into a lower level that resembles indoor swimming pools. Eventually, she winds up at a dead end, but before the monster can get her, the room is engulfed in a strange green light that causes the camera to black out. All of this leads us back to the very first video that Kane uploaded in the series, found footage number one. In this video, recovered by Ace on September 23rd, 1996, we see an indie movie director named Kane filming with his friends before he trips and no clips into the back rooms. After exploring around for a bit, finding weird architecture, items that are completely out of place, and markings left by previous people who no clipped in, Kane encounters another bacteria monster. He runs away, chased by the creature before being cornered and presumably killed. As the monster takes him, his camera falls down a hole, no clipping back out of the back rooms and into the real world. And while that's the end of the main uploads of the series, there is one final one that I should include in the timeline. The secret one upload was home 27647.mov, which likely takes place during the early 2000s. This is just a home video with some glitchy sections and strange imagery, which I'm going to touch on in a moment. How do I know that it takes place in the aughts? thanks to this frame right here. See that TV over on the right? This sort of flat screen CRT television with the silver casing was popular back in the early to mid 2000s, meaning that yeah. at least 
part of the video was filmed around that time. I had one. <laughs> So stepping back and looking at everything laid out here, the main story follows Async's experiments, its employees, and its impact on the world. That much wow. is obvious. But the more important story here seems to be the one that's hidden under the surface. Remember the green light that's popped up a few times over the yes. series? It appears most prominently towards the end of the timeline in found footage number two. But remember, it was also- He's gonna be answering the questions I was probably gonna make in a video that I wanted to make. The first thing that we see in the series chronologically right now. In Overflow, a near identical looking green light fills whatever station we're in in the early 70s. Considering that the building from Overflow shakes pretty darn violently, similar to what we see happening in Async's headquarters during First Contact, I believe that this was some sort of portal opening at least briefly into the back rooms. And not just any type of portal either, a time portal. A and given how similar portal? it looks to what we see surrounding the girl in found footage number two, I wouldn't be surprised if she or her camera were sent back in time to the early 70s. I know this sounds crazy, but we already are aware that time acts strangely in the back rooms. One of the major events in the true. series is Peter slipping forward in time by several months, so we know that things can be physically transported in time in this universe. We also know that things from the future can intrude in the past. In previous theories, we've discussed how one of the secret videos showed us a cough medicine commercial from the early 2000s interrupting a Simpsons episode that aired in the early 90s. That's the downside. Now here's the good part. You... We can also hear a news broadcast from 2015 during the Pitfalls video, a video that happened 25 years before that broadcast ever aired. Do you think that your current president, President Castro, will come visit the United States? Taking that to its logical what? conclusion, something physically entering the back rooms and then exiting at some point in the past is entirely possible. Additionally, remember the name on that document from Overflow? Ivan Beck. Kane zooms in real close to make sure that we remember that one real good. Ivan Beck. Now, why does that name sound so that? familiar? I'm trying to get hold of my supervisor, Ivan Beck. Mr. Beck, may I ask where this Oh, it's the doctor that yep, did the Ivan autopsy. Beck is a high ranking async official. I think that this girl from Found Footage 2, or oh, at the very at least her camera uh, made mind. it back to the 1970s and into the hands of Ivan Beck and an early async. That could be the whole inciting incident of the series, creating some sort of time loop paradox. Async gets a hold of this footage of the back rooms, which then makes them want to explore it. They open the gateway, which breaks reality, and eventually this girl no clips in, winding up back in time, starting the loop over. This might even explain the name of the video, Overflow. Time is mm. literally overflowing and running over the edge. What's more, during their exploration, Async may have just found themselves another time portal. The only other time that we see a greenish glow in the series is behind the door across the room in pitfalls. And get a load of this. As Marvin is falling down the hole in that video, we see a camera glitch and text hidden within that reads, quote, while data could be what? inferred from the readings, nobody knew what would actually be found on the other side. What if what they found was a portal to another time and place? That would certainly fit our description. Either way, whatever Async is doing, it is bad for the rest of us. One of the stranger moments of the series up until now has been this extended shot from the very beginning of Reunion, focusing on a coffee cup with the letters MLML and some coordinates on the front. Now at first I thought this might be some Roman numeral, but it's not actually a valid Roman numeral. You can't have I thought it was the name of a company in Roman numerals. So I opened up our trusty old Google Maps and typed in the coordinates, giving us the rough location of the real world Moss Landing Marine Laboratories. So that solves the MLML mystery, and a bit more digging huh. shows us that this logo I I was is right. actually a riff on a real one that Moss Landing has used in the past. But the ocean messaging doesn't end with MLML. In fact, I believe that we can actually decode the biggest theme of the series based on a video just drowning in ocean metaphors. You may have noticed that I haven't mentioned one of the mainline videos of the Backrooms canon yet. I remember. Well, that's largely because we don't know where this one slots into the timeline. There's no date associated with it, so there's really no I don't think I've seen this it. one. In fact, not really sure that the quote-unquote events that take place in this video are literal. The whole thing is just renderings of important places and people to Async and Backrooms lore, angled and reflected like Inception or Doctor no, Strange. No, I don't, I don't think I saw a this one. narration reads a poetic passage. It's more of an artistic piece, really, but it is considered part of the Backrooms canon. And here's the thing. The voiceover also has an ocean theme, just like that MLML reference. Just listen to what it says. I had a poem on a manor overlooking the sea, but when skies turned dark, the house was taken by the sea, cast down to the seabed with all the other forgotten things. All spoken as we see images of the ocean, but also hmm. really taken what this video is saying. The speaker had a home that sat beside the sea, but it collapsed into it and sank to the bottom, forgotten. This is clearly a metaphor. We're not talking about houses and metaphor. oceans. We're talking about the world and the back rooms and Async's experiments making the world more and more unstable. Remember when I called out the last shot of Overflow? After the green light flares up and something from the back rooms is sent back in time to
here, we see the sky reflected at the earliest possible point in our timeline without any other async experiments that we know of. But afterwards, we get more and more of that reflected imagery in I Remember as async continues their experiments. This is even reflected in another line from I Remember. The reflections? Those are the seams along the sky. The tears in reality as everything starts to fall apart. This might have even happened before, in a previous reality or simulation of our world. In found huh. footage number two, we see parts of a home inside the back rooms as the girl explores the area, including this part here with a strange banister and railway in front of an empty room. But here's the thing. This is almost identical to a room that we see in the secret Home 27647 video. Notice the unique bars on the railing? The way there's an open air entrance in the room oh. behind it and a door off the right wall? This is the same architecture, but one is in the back rooms and one is in our real world. Want more proof? The girl takes a prolonged look at this painting before the bacteria monster wakes up and starts chasing her. And in the secret video, we again get a prolonged look at that very same painting in the home. And remember, based on the TV we see here, this video was likely taken in the 2000s, several years before found footage 2 takes place. So how could these details be in the back rooms now? Is it another time loop situation? Maybe. Or maybe it's because these are from previous iterations of our world world of the simulation that was destabilized and collapsed into the back rooms. In other words, the house that fell into the sea. There's a map shown in the Home 27647 video of the Ptolemaic system, a geocentric model of the universe that suggests that the Earth is the unmoving center of everything. And isn't it interesting that this very specific map that Kane chose to include in this video is very yellow. The last line, and I remember, is... <laughs> Here. You have always been here. Everything revolves around the back rooms, whether it be in a time loop or a simulation or both. It's the center of everything in the world, and Async's meddling has doomed the world to collapse into the back rooms once again, the house to fall back into the sea once again. You have always been here. In this series, in this world, the back rooms has always been a part of it. We're just a layer on top waiting to collapse down into it, and laying out the story Kane's trying to tell here doesn't feel like our world has that much time left. But hey! That's wow. just a theory, a film theory, and cut. And hey, sorry, but he said cut, and my lights flickered. Why did my lights flicker? Okay. <laughs> Remember when I mentioned the Dad channel earlier in this episode? If you want to check out us decoding the mysteries of the Dad Feels channel here on YouTube. Okay, I think that's enough. <laughs> okay, so that raised a lot more questions about the back rooms than I initially had. But I don't feel satisfied with the green light just being some sort of jumping in and forward of time. If that was the case, then... With uh, Peter going missing, there would have been a green glow, wouldn't there have been? Because he jumped forward in time, so there would have been a green glow that would have lured him away. So, I don't feel like the green glow is some sort of, like, portal to go forward, back and forward into time. But rather, I feel like it's a separate entity of its own that's now lurking in the back room. At least it's out how I feel on it. <laughs> so. I think. I think the back room. Well, the green glow. It, it has to be an entity. A separate entity that's in the back rooms. I, it can't. I can't. I don't think it's going to be. It's like some sort of jumping between f back and forth in time. After all, we've only seen it two times and we're still not entirely don't have enough evidence to pile on top of each other that it could be a time jump but rather an entity so that's what that's what i think on the matter so with that being said guys hopefully you enjoy today's reaction video please like and subscribe all that stuff guys and i will see you in the next video bye